All right, uh, welcome to Quarantined Math, day one for math analysis, speech featuring our special guest star, Mitru, the Siamese cat. Now, um, what we're going to be working on today is kind of a prerequisite to derivatives. Uh, I know that's the packet that I passed out to you guys, that's its primary focus, but for us to really get into derivatives, what we're going to need to do is have a quick review of functions. Um, so that's going to be going to be our discussion for today. Nothing directly related to the packet, but really just uh, setting things up so that we can jump into that packet in the next day or two and really, you know, start start with the same base level of knowledge at that point. And sorry for the shakiness, Mitru decided to uh, start hitting the camera. So. All right, so we are going to start today talking about functions. Uh, Ultimately, we're going to get into derivatives, uh, but that probably won't happen until tomorrow or next week. Uh, the reason for that is because we just have a couple baseline uh, part, bits of information that we want to get through before uh, we can really talk about derivatives at the level uh, that we want to in order to really successfully understand it. So we're going to begin by just a quick review of functions from what you very likely should have learned about them in Algebra 2. A function is written like this. f of x equals, I don't know, you can have literally anything on this side, 3x squared plus 2. That's a function. The really big key to it is this part right here. And I, I drew one arrow just pointing at the f, and I, I meant to point at it all, so we got, it's just, it's, it's this. It's all that. That's, that's the big thing. Um, this is what throws people off and confuses people because it looks like more variables and it looks like more uh, stuff going on than it actually is. Here's the deal. The letter at the very beginning, F, is what you're usually going to see, but sometimes you might see G or H or I or whatever other letters. This is just a name. This is a name in the sense that we want to be able to look at this equation and say, okay, well, if we're talking about function f, then we need to be looking at 3x squared plus 2. Or if I had five different functions written out here, an f function, a g function, an h function, and an i function, then if somebody were to say, okay, well, we want to use equation g, that's a lot easier than saying, oh, well, let's look at the equation that says 4x squared plus 7x plus 9. Uh, this strictly works as a name. So that is the only thing this does. This right here, what is inside the parentheses, is our uh, variable or the value of the variable. Now, what that means is that we have missing values or we have variables in our equation or in our function. Whatever is in these parentheses is how those are represented. So effectively, the reason why you see an x in this equation right here is because it says that the missing variables are going to be represented by x. If we saw f of 2, then what that would tell us is that all of our missing variables should be represented with a 2. So we would rewrite this equation because the f tells us, we look at this equation here, and instead of writing x, we would write 2 because that's what's in our parentheses. And then in this case, we could just solve it, right? 2 squared is 4. 3 times 4 plus 2, well, that gets us 14. And then we solved f of 2. That's all there is to it. But derivatives are going to ask a little bit more from us than that because instead of just nice whole numbers that we're going to be putting in for the value of the function uh, and instead of just a single variable, we're actually going to be uh, doing something that is kind of an extension of what we call composition functions, putting a function into a function or an equation into a function. So they're going to be uh, asking for things in the vein of this. f of x plus 1 uh, is what? That kind of thing, right? Like So if this is our function, 3x squared plus 2, uh, you know, that's f then x plus 1 is our missing variable, so this is what we would write in place 
where we usually see just an x. We would write it like this, 3 times x plus 1 squared plus 2. And then we would have to ultimately solve that, figure that out. This is the general idea, again, behind um, the foundational information we're going to need to go into derivatives. Recognizing that whenever you see a statement like this, f or g or h or i, whatever it may be, with something after it, then we replace the x in that original function with whatever is in these parentheses. So I'm going to bring up a couple of different functions and a couple different examples, and we're going to work our way through how we would rewrite that function. And then tomorrow, I believe we'll actually go through solving that function. So I have a couple of equations written here on the left side of the screen, and then a couple of problems uh, that effectively I'm just going to state are asking us to rewrite the function or write the function uh, with the values for our missing variables uh, substituted in. So if we look at something like this, g of 2x plus 1, what that tells us we need to do is first find out what equation g is. Well, if we look at our list of functions here, equation g is 9x squared plus 2. So that tells us that's going to be our base function, or what I like to call our base function, 9x squared plus 2 here, right? But that's not the uh, finished version of, of what we really need. We need to take what is in these parentheses and write it in place of the x. So the way we would do that is write the 9, and then instead of writing x, write what is here. We effectively just erase that x and write this in its spot. 2x plus 1, it keeps the squared, because we're only replacing the x, and then plus 2. So that is the kind of substituted in version of g of 2x plus 1. So we're going to do that for all th uh, three of these others as well. So h of x plus 2. So we first identify h. You see that right here? x squared plus x. So then we will replace the x's, every instance of x's, not just the first one, but every one, with x plus 2. So I'm going to do that here. Instead of writing x squared, I'm going to replace that x with x plus 2 squared, and then it has plus x, so plus, and then I'll replace that second x again, x plus 2. And that is what the substituted in version of h of x plus 2 looks like. I'm going to work through these next two at a little bit quicker pace. f is 5x plus 9, so instead of 5x plus 9, I am going to erase that x, and in its place, x minus 9, right there, and then plus 9, because that is how this ends. Finally, i, I look over here and I see equation i is negative 3 plus x, so negative 3 plus, and instead of writing x, what is in these parentheses, 2x minus 5. So that is the idea behind how functions work, how it works or what we do whenever we see a letter that tells us the equation to look at and we see something in these parentheses, that is what we substitute in for x. It would be lovely if we just saw a whole number in these parentheses like we did in that earlier example, but at the point of which you guys are at in math, it's not very likely and not very common to just see a nice whole number there. We're usually doing uh, something a little bit more complex like this, where we're replacing or substituting that x for an entire expression. Uh, tomorrow, what we will do is we will take these four and we are going to simplify them. We're going to solve them. And uh, in the process of doing that, uh, we'll actually get down to a singular expression in simplest form instead of stuff like this. Because right now that can simplify. You know, that can be squared or these can add or we can have like terms, numbers can distribute, all that kind of stuff. We'll get into that tomorrow, but 
for today, I just wanted to uh, foundationally say, this is what we do.